Hi, Evan Montes of Callthrone here, and yes, I know I need a better intro, but for now that'll do. I wanted to talk about an article that I saw on the internet. It's not exactly new, but it's just very interesting for the following reasons. Let's look at the article first. It's about a new type of cloud that they've discovered. It does, they don't have a name for it yet. They're just calling it Asparatus, which means rough or jagged edged um, because of the, I don't know, the formation of the clouds. It's they're huge clouds, they're monstrous, they take up the entire sky, uh, and they don't have an official name for this. They, they say this is a new type of cloud, and they've been you know photographing it for the past 30 years. And well, there's still no name for it. And if you can look if you look at the picture, I'll, I'll just go through this really fast. I'll put the link in the description box so you can check it out yourselves. But they're huge clouds. They're quite beautiful, actually. They're just, it doesn't look real. I mean, it looks like these look like Photoshop pictures, but they're not. This is the, you know, the real pictures. Uh, quite awesome, quite beautiful, and quite scary. I mean, they're so big. They cover up the entire sky. So it's a new type of um, clouds and something new in our world, in our environment. And what's funny is that these clouds, they have a strange behavior. They are, they're massive, they're really thick, really big, but they usually just dissipate without producing a storm, without any rain or anything. You would think that, you know, you see this, it's going to rain really bad, but they tend to just break up. So it's, it's, it's rather unusual, their behavior. Which brings me to what this video is all about, and of course is about the Bible. Now the Bible says there's going to be all these types of signs and wonders in the sky, including um, darkness. The book of Isaiah, you see that in, the, in Judgment Day, I guess. The stars, the moon, the sun will all be darkened. Um, and this is a reference also to what Jesus said in Matthew 24. 29, the sun will be darkened, moon, stars, uh, which is repeated in Mark 13. And again, it's repeated in Luke 21. Um, and this is a reference to the book of Revelation, where the sun becomes black. And other parts of Revelation, where the moon, the sun, the stars, everything goes dark. And so on and so forth. Now, the thing is... Um, it seems like a pretty intense, uh, you know, events for the sun, the moon, the stars just to stop giving their light. However, one day God spoke to one of his modern day prophets. He told this prophet, the book of Revelation is simpler than you think. So taking into account this, if we simplify all of these um, previous verses, the simplest thing for the sun and the moon and the stars to go dark is not for them to actually go dark, you know, not for the whole universe to turn off, but for a heavy formation of clouds around the world. Could it be? Or is this just some kind of personal interpretation of mine? Well, let's start connecting the dots and see if we find anything. We can start by going back to Isaiah and uh, using a reference point, the Day of the Lord, which is, you know, almost synonymous with Judgment Day, I guess. Um, if we anchor this with another verse or another chapter or another book, uh, maybe we'll find another element that will give us more understanding. And we can do that with Ezekiel chapter 30. Again, we find the reference point, Day of the Lord. And a new element is introduced. The Day of the Lord is going to be a cloudy day. How about that? So while Isaiah talks about the day of the Lord being dark, the sun being dark, moon, stars, everything dark, Ezekiel tells us also it's a cloudy day. So most likely, it's a cloudy day. The universe does not go dark. Thank God. And we can connect this even further with Joel uh, chapter 2, a day of the Lord. And what happens in this day of the Lord... Well, it's a day of darkness, as we've seen, day of gloominess, as we've seen. 
it is a day of clouds. So here in Joel, we, we have both elements, the darkness and the clouds together, which I think pretty much uh, gives an understanding about all this darkness, what is causing it. It's going to be intense cloud activity. So is this what we're seeing? Is this new kind of cloud a sign actually from heaven, from God? I mean, Jesus himself said there are going to be signs and wonders in the end days that are going to tell us about his second coming, are going to warn us, are going to be signs for us to prepare. Is this Asperatus cloud one of those signs? Is God saying, here come the clouds I've been talking about. Here they are, and they're going to get more intense. So get ready. And indeed, part of the reason for these signs is so that we can see them, be forewarned, and make a decision. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Seeing these signs, seeing that God is real, that the Bible is truth, that things are happening accordingly, this will give us an option to make a decision. Are we going to believe God? Are we going to believe his word? And are we going to be prepared for what's coming? It's our decision. It's a decision we can make right now. However, there are problems. As usual, there's always problems. And the biggest problem with God's signs are when people do not see the signs. Why? Because they are distracted with other theories, other opinions, ideas, etc. God is showing us certain things so we can know where we're at in this moment of time. So we can know what to do, how to prepare, what's next. But then we get distracted. We don't see the signs. We think it's something else. We think it's man-made. And hence, we end up with the wrong solutions to the wrong problem. So the purpose of this video is for you to consider what's in the Bible, what God is saying, and what God has written in his Bible, and what's happening right now. I'm not here to debate harp or global warming. You know, there's a billion videos with all this. But this video is just to present to you this, this point of view, this biblical point of view. Not to debate. I don't care about debating, really. It's a waste of time. But just consider. Just consider what's in the Bible. Consider what's been written for thousands of years. Take it into account. You know, meditate on it. Research it. Investigate it. Read about it. And if you're interested enough about it, pray to God. Just pray. Ask Him. He's not going to keep anything a secret from you. But are you willing to humble yourselves? Are you willing to acknowledge that maybe you, you don't have all the answers? So, choice is yours. Thank you for watching. God bless and take care.